So let's talk about the gizmo now. I'm going to go grab a Polymesh 3D. You can click on your pilot here, go grab the star, drag it on your canvas, go into edit mode. Uh, go down here to initialize, make it a Q cube, go into polyframe here, go into your Z modeler brush, BZM. And I'm just going to quickly, uh, I guess we can hover over phase, do Q mesh poly group all, hit X to go across X symmetry, and we're going to start poly or Q meshing a little bit. I'm going to alt drag over these two and start pulling these out. I'm going to alt drag over these two and start pulling these out. And I'm basically looking for a different angle here. And if I want to make this all one poly group, I'm going to hit Control W. So now that I've got this all set up, I'm going to hit W. And you can see that's going to bring up my gizmo. If you're new to ZBrush, then you see this gizmo and you're like, okay, that looks like any other thing I've seen in any 3D program. Uh, if you've come, if you're coming back from using ZBrush a while ago and you're kind of refreshing yourself, this may look bizarre to you. You're probably more used to seeing this. If you hit the Y key, that's going to toggle back to transpose, and you can see right up here, this is your gizmo toggle right here. So you can just hit the Y key to toggle in and out of gizmo and transpose. Now, the transpose is still functional. It's great for use on, say, the smart transpose masking or array mesh functionality, transpose modeling. These are things we'll get into later. But for the most part, probably 99% of the time you're gonna be using your gizmo. So because of that, let's talk about some gizmo functionality. The first thing you're gonna see is this gear right here. And unfortunately, we're gonna skip all this. There's some really, really cool stuff in here, um, but we're just gonna talk about basic movement within ZBrush. You can start moving subtools around and posing and rotating things. So skip the gear. And in fact, we're gonna jump all the way to the other side here, uh, not to the transpose all selected, this little lock icon right here. Uh, if you tap the Alt key, or if you hold down the Alt key, if you hover over the lock and then tap the Alt key, you're gonna see it locks and unlocks. So with the Alt held down, it's an unlocked gizmo. If the Alt is not held down, it's locked. So while it's locked and you touch any of these things, it's going to move your object. So for example, we have X, Y, and Z, and you can we talked about this earlier, where Z is forward, Y is up, and then X is side to side. So if you want to move this object forward, we can touch this blue arrow right here, and we can just move this forward. If we want to scale it in the Z direction only, we can just scale this here. Same thing with the Y, same thing with the X. Now you're gonna see as we're rotating around this object, we have uh, X, Y, and Z, our red, green, and blue, X, Y, and Z lines right here for rotate. So we can rotate in the Y, rotate in the Z, rotate in the X here. But there's also these white ones here. So this outside white and this outside white corners, those are screen based. So if you ever wanna rotate an object based on your screen, uh, so if you hold down shift and snap, you're gonna see you're gonna snap your viewport to the front view, and then your screen based is essentially doing the exact same thing as a Z rotate. However, if you're skewed a little bit, you can use your camera based rotation to rotate your object based on where your camera's looking. Same thing with move, if I snap to the top, or if I snap to the front here, I can use these corners and move this around on this axis. I can hold down shift and snap to the side and I can move it around on this plane. Or I can kind of go to a skewed three or to a three quarter view and I can move it around this way as well. So again, these outside white ones that don't change are these screen based options. Now let's say we're looking at our object here and I want to move this object on this axis where this face is pointing. So what I want to do is move this pivot around. And in order to do that, what I have to do is hold down Alt, because that's going to unlock the pivot. So once this thing is unlocked, if I grab any rotate scale or move, it's going to move that pivot. So I can hold down Alt and grab this corner. I can move the pivot up here. I can rotate this pivot. I can move it in this direction. So as long as you have Alt held down, you can move this pivot wherever you want to. In fact, if you hold down Alt and then tap on your object, it's going to inherit the direction of that face. So again, if I wanted to move this object in the direction of this face, I can just hold down Alt, tap on that face, and you're gonna see the gizmo is perfectly aligned to that face there, and now I can just move this object in that direction. Of course, you can use this in conjunction with masking as well. So if you hold down Control, and then you just mask this corner over here, or if we wanna unmask just that, you can hold down Control and Alt, and that'll mask everything except for this corner, hit W, and then we'll go ahead and just tap somewhere on the object, then Alt tap again, so you can see, okay, we're getting exactly oriented to that face here, and then if you hold down, or if you just grab this blue arrow, you can see you can move this unmasked area right along that axis of where that face was. Very useful. We can hold down Control and then Alt, or sorry, Control and then drag to unmask, Control Alt to just unmask this area here, hold down Alt and tap, and then again, just move along that direction or along this direction or rotate if you want to, and you're good to go. Now, when I'm rotating, I'm not holding down Alt. I, I do want to move the object, so I'm not gonna hold down Alt. If I hold down Alt and rotate, it's just gonna rotate my gizmo. 
So position your gizmo where you want it, let go of Alt, and then rotate or move. Let's go ahead and unmask. Let's hit the comma key. Let's go up here to Tool. Double click this Demo Soldier. Click Hide, and then hit F to frame. So just like in previous videos, we're able to Alt tap through here and select different objects. So let's go ahead and hit W. We'll Alt tap this shirt here and we'll just work our way down the line. So we've already learned how we can move this pivot wherever we want. We can alt tap on the object to reset the pivot based on that normal face that you click on. But you're also gonna see we have a reset mesh orientation and this is alt to unlock underneath the gizmo. So if you hold alt to unlock and then you hit this reset orientation, you're gonna see how the pivot's kind of skewed here. You can hold down alt and reset it and now it's reset to be perfectly Z forward, Y up, and X to the left. So no matter where in space this pivot is, you can hold down Alt and you can always reset it to the proper X, Y, and Z axis. Now, if you don't hold down Alt with this and you have, and I'm gonna hold down Alt and I'm gonna kind of skew this position here. So here is the gizmo kind of skewed off here. If you don't hold down Alt and you hit this reset mass orientation, what it's going to do is watch the pivot. It's going to reset the pivot so that it's perfectly X, Y, and Z, but it's going to move your object to make that happen, to compensate for that. So if that's functionality that you like, for, for, feel free to do that. If you want to say, you know what, I want to orient this whole object to this face over here, you can Alt select that direction and then just reset that. So now that face you selected is now perfectly oriented Z forward, Y up, if that's useful to you. If not, go ahead and undo that. This home button right next to it is mesh to axis. However, if you hold down alt, that's just gonna to go to the axis point, which is the zero, zero, zero of your object here, which happens to be in his crotch. So now if you wanted to reset this to the axis and reset the orientation of this pivot, you can hold down alt, hit the home key to go to the axis, and then hold down alt, hit the reset orientation, and now it's right in the zero, zero, zero world center Z forward, Y up, perfectly straight. Now, just like the reset orientation, if you use mesh to axis, if you go, let's go, hold down Alt, go to, um, actually, let's talk about this next one, this unmasked mesh center. If you hold down Alt and click that one, it's gonna move your gizmo pivot to your unmasked mesh center. And now, if you don't hold down Alt and hit this home key, that's gonna take your entire mesh and move it down to zero, zero, zero. Very similar to the functionality of deformation unify, which I think we've talked about before. If you just hit unify, it's gonna move it to your zero, zero, zero axis based on your bounding box center. Only unify is going to scale it to a ZBrush unit, essentially however big a cube primitive is. So if you wanna do that, feel free. And in this case, if you want to, you can hold down alt, go to unmatch mass center, reset orientation, and now you're back to the middle. But we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, unmasked mesh center is always gonna work. So if I go into solo mode here, and then I hold down control and then alt, and I just grab a little corner piece of this shirt here, and I hold down alt and go to unmasked mesh center, it's gonna snap right to that unmasked area. Super useful. In fact, if we go over here to masking, you're gonna see there's a button for unmasked mesh center. So if your pivot is like way out of sight somewhere and your object is here and you're like, oh, I wish I could go to Unmasked Mesh Center. You can assign a hotkey to this or you can make a button in a custom menu if you want to and it'll go right to Unmasked Mesh Center. Um, an alternative to that, if your pivot is just way out of screen, you can hold down Alt and then you can tap on your object and then you can click go to Unmasked Mesh Center. So it's an extra couple clicks, but that's another alternative. Now, a lot of times what I'll do when I hold down Alt and then I, instead of just tapping on an object, what I'll do is I'll hold down Alt and then tap on my object and then hold down shift and that's going to constrain it to a straight axis. So if I ever wanna find the point of an object and then hold down shift, I can constrain it just to that. Let's go back to that other object we were working with here. So we were kind of playing around with this object that we made. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to deformation. I'm gonna crank up some noise here. So I'm gonna kind of warble these edges here. So let's say I wanna straighten all these faces back here. You can do a thing called, well, there's one thing you can do, which is using your clip brush. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down Control, Alt, and then unmask this back area here. We're gonna hit W, and I'm gonna find, I'm gonna pick one of these points that I wanna scale them in the same direction as so I can flatten this back plane out. So what I'm gonna do is hold down Alt, and I click on this point, I'm gonna hold down Shift, let me do that again, Alt, click on this point, you're gonna see how it's just kinda wobbling around. If you hold down Shift, it'll constrain it. So I can hold down Shift and just pull straight out. So now I'm, my gizmo is right on this point. I'm straight out from this point. So now I can use the Z scale and you can see I can Z scale these things back into a straight line. 
So we'll unmask, you can hold down Control Alt, we'll try that again, we'll unmask this side, hold down Alt, and again, hold down Alt, and then hold down Shift, and that'll just constrain to a straight line, and now we can uh, scale this. Now, if we're gonna scale one side, you're gonna see how it's scaling to the middle here. Turn on local symmetry, and that'll go ahead and scale along this axis. We'll get more into local symmetry when we're uh, pending meshes and making more complex objects. To explain this unmasked mesh center a little bit better on another object, let's go back to our, go ahead and select your demo soldier here, go out of solo mode, alt tap his bracelets here, and if we hit W, you're gonna see the gizmo is gonna go right between these things. Let's go into solo mode. And if I hover over this bracelet, it doesn't look like X symmetry is turned on. If we go up here to transform, activate symmetry is off. You can tap X to activate symmetry. So now when I hover over this bracelet, you're gonna see another dot appears on the other side. So what we can do is we can hold down Alt. If we go to Unmesh Mesh Center, actually you don't even need to hold down Alt, you can just click that button. There is no non-Alt alternative. I just, I'm in the habit of doing that. Um, you can go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and you're gonna see if we have two objects on either side and we have X symmetry turned on, it's going to go to the unmasked middle of each individual object. If we hit X to toggle activate symmetry off, and then we go to Unmash Mesh Center, it's gonna to go to the unmasked area center between these two objects. Essentially the bounding box of these objects here is gonna to go to the unmasked middle of them. So X to go to the individual middle of each one, turn off X symmetry to go to the middle of both of them. And of course, since nothing's masked, it's just assuming that you wanna to go to the middle of the unmasked object, which is all of it. If we hold down control and then drag a little or hold down control alt and we'll unmask this little area that'll go to the unmasked center of those polygons that are unmasked let's control drag go out of solo mode here and let's talk about this icon right here this is transpose all selected subtools so just like when we were talking about visibility or where you can hold down let's alt tap the shirt here and go into solo mode again you can hold down control shift and you can like isolate a piece or if you have multiple poly groups here let's see if i can do this real quick let's hold down control shift, grab this, hit control W, and then hold down control shift, and then grab these pieces down here, hit control W, so now we have multiple polygroups here. So to select these polygroups, you can hold down control shift and tap. Oops, that's that's some other gizmo functionality we'll be talking about in just a second. Hit Q to go into a brush mode, hold down control shift and tap, and you can see we can isolate these by just selecting them with visibility. And we talked about this before, but I'll just, just to explain that functionality again really quickly, hold down control shift to grab this green one, control shift drag to invert that selection, control shift tap to add purple to it, control shift drag to invert, etc. So that's the visibility control shift shortcuts. Now the reason I'm bringing that up is if you go out of solo mode here and you hit W and you turn on this transpose all selected subtools, you're gonna see nothing happens. But if you hold down control shift and tap in your document, it's gonna hatch all of your objects. What that means is this gizmo isn't gonna do anything because they're all hatched. To unhatch, and the hatch I'm just talking about the shading, it's kind of lines. Uh, if you hold down control shift and then you tap an object, it's going to un, it's gonna make it unhatched. So these are all hatched, now this one's unhatched. If I wanna invert this, control shift drag, oh, I'm sorry, Control shift tap to invert. So we've got the body selected. We want to, we, let's say, I want to select everything but the body. So the first thing you're going to want to do is control shift tap to deselect everything, and then control shift tap to get the body, and then control shift tap in your document to invert your selection. So now everything is selected except for your body. And I'm going to hit, uh, hit control shift A and then control W, make that shirt all one poly group again. So if you want to move all of the accessories except for his body, you can now move all of these subtools at the same time. And if you want to, if you want to reset your orientation, you can hold down Alt and you can reset your orientation, go to Unmash Mesh Center, and now it's in the middle of these subtools, you can move them all at once. They're still separate subtools. You're just moving them all at once. If you want to exit this mode after you're done moving, what I tend to want to do is what I'll do is I'll control shift drag out here to unhatch everything and then I'll turn it off. And if it's on and everything's unhatched, you'll, that'll just move all the objects. So if you just grab and move all your objects here. But if it's off, then it's just gonna maintain that gizmo functionality that you're used to. And of course you can undo all that if you'd like. So now let's say we wanted to move multiple subtools, but we wanna like bend the arm with the bracelets in the hand. Luckily, transpose multiple subtools respects masking. So you can hold down Alt and tap the body. Let's hit X to go across X symmetry, hold down Control. Go up here, go to mask lasso, and I'm gonna mask everything at that elbow here. And then I'm gonna control tap and invert that mask. And again, alternatively, you can hold down control alt and that'll unmask as well. I'm gonna hit W, 
going to gizmo, and we have X symmetry turned on, and the move multiple subtools is going to respect that. I can hold down Alt and go to un or just go to click go to unmesh mesh center. I'm going to put position this pivot right in this elbow area, so we can use it kind of like a joint location. And then I'm going to go to move, transpose all selected subtools. Hold down Control Shift and tap. And now everything's hatched, so I want to make sure I can move the arm. I want to make sure I can move the bracelet, and I want to make sure I can move the glove. So with all of those unhatched, you can see I can now go to the side. I can use my camera-based rotation if I, I mean, I can rotate in the X, Y, and Z if I want to, but I can also use my camera base here. So I can go to the side, or I can go to the top and position my camera and just rotate along the elbow here. And you're going to see the gloves and the wrist strap moves along with it. Now, if you want to soften this transition, remember with your mask, you can hold down Control and tap, and that'll blur that out. And now you can, again, camera-based, and you can bend these elbows, and the guards will follow. So it will respect masking. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a selected object that's masked. If you had masked one of the bracelets and not the other one, that one would have been left behind because it would have been masked. So even if the subtool isn't selected, it will still respect masking when you're using this move multiple. So let's go ahead and control drag to unmask. With this uh, transpose all selected subtools, control shift drag to unhatch everything. Let's go out of that mode. And then now we have this guy transposed with those two objects following along. All right, one thing I always forget when I'm doing gizmo and scaling and stuff. So if you hit W, uh, you have scale. You can scale in the Y, the X, or the Z. You can also uniformly scale all three axes at once. And if you start scaling in the Y and then you tap Alt, or hold down Alt, I should say, you can scale in those two axes. Same thing with the X. If you start scaling and then hold down Alt, it'll scale in those two. And then hold down, or start scaling in Z and then hold down Alt, it'll scale in those two. Generally speaking, usually Y is the one you're going to want to do. So you're going to start scaling in Y and then hold down Alt, and then it'll scale along those two axes.